Hi y'all. In this video, as the title might suggest to you, I'm going to talk a little bit about Patreon and the goings-on at Patreon. Uh, much has been said about it, but not everybody has said it yet, so here I am to give you my take on it. A couple of days ago, I received from Patreon an email, and it was a survey. The only question they had for me is, in the future, will you recommend, what, how likely are you to recommend to other people uh, our service? And my answer was, N not likely at all. I will not recommend your service, period. And then there's a little blurb to explain why I would not do it. And so I took the liberty of filling that out. Great opportunity, thank you. And I sent it to them. And uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about it. My first inclination, my first hint that anything was going on was a couple, I don't know, maybe 10, 12 days ago, something like that, when a, one of my patrons uh, emailed me saying he was canceling his Patreon account. I get those emails occasionally. And I, okay. Um, and then, is there another service that I can sign up to that you know about to support you? And I thought, well, that's weird. That never happens. They just, you know, there are different reasons people leave, but I've never had anybody leave to go to something else to do the same thing they were doing on Patreon. And so I figured that the rest of the tech, the rest of the message would be one of those, you know, I can't afford it. People who cancel their accounts and like, you know, they support me because they like me, they frequently will email me to let me know. It's not you, it's just, uh, you know, I'm back in school, just had a kid, you know, explaining themselves to me. I appreciate it, but you don't have to. I mean, it's completely your largesse. I'm very grateful for it. Uh, you don't owe me an explanation for anything. Uh, but anyway, and it was, you know, the recent ongoings at Patreon have soured me to it. I can't in good conscience continue supporting this company, and I'm jumping ship. And uh, then uh, in rapid succession after that, the next day and the day after that, I got uh, quite a bit of a similar email from people. And uh, I thought, well, um, I'm not going to respond to anybody until I figure out, A, what's going on, B, is it justified, C, what should I do, given you know what I find out about A and B. So I was like, I don't want to sound weaselly when I email them. Uh, I don't, you know, I don't want to, any of that. Uh, I also don't want to act precipitously or rashly, which I'm not given to do anyway, but even less so when finances are involved. Uh, you know, I'm not one of those people who, by the way, incidentally, puts up like, oh, support me on Patreon, rate, uh, uh, rate, like, subscribe. I put a little blurb in the box below, and people find it, and some subscribe, some don't. I don't talk about it a lot. Uh, finances are an awkward subject anyway, but, you know, it is there. But I didn't want to act rashly, so I, uh, you know, I'm going to read around, we'll watch some videos, see what people are saying about it, what's going on, what is verified, what's not verified. And then... Um, Matt Christensen uploaded a video. I'll put a link to it below. And it was a tra it is his talking about a conversation he had with Patreon about this subject at the behest of Patreon. They con they contacted him to talk about it. Uh, so he had a transcript of that conversation. He went over some of the salient bits and I watched it and I read along and I thought this is problematic to use one of the left's terms. And it, it does seem to me that they are punishing people who are on the right side of the political spectrum because they don't like what it is. They don't like the words that they say. Now, let me talk about my relationship with Patreon ever since I started. I gave it about a year of being open before I joined. Um, there are a number of reasons for this, not least of which is that before I get on the service and say to you guys, hey, check me out here, I want to make sure that it's going to be stable, that it's not like a scam, uh, or anything like that, because I'm not going to be recommending to people sub uh, various organizations or, or the like, even you know if it financially benefits me to do it, unless and until I'm sure that you know it's not going to bite me in the ass. So I held off for a while, and then the Lauren Southern banning happened, and I thought, oh, a journalist has been banned. This is bad. And then Jack Conti, I think it is, uh, of Pomplamoose put out a video explaining the, his decision, or Patreon's decision, for banning Lore and Southern. And they did it, you know, he was, I don't know, in a detailed kind of way. And he talked about the system that they use is manifest observable behavior. Now, for those of you who remember Zoe Quinn, uh, she, you know, of Gamergate fame, uh, she started a group called Crash Override Network, and as soon as I saw it, I was like, the, the acronym here is CON? Well, that seemed very appropriate. And I joked uh, with a friend of mine when he came up with, with when uh, Jack came up with uh, Manifest Observable Behavior. I was like, you know, it's funny that it spells MOB. The acronym is MOB. 
I wonder if this is going to be foreshadowing. And lo and behold, it seems to have been that. I was only trying to be funny. I didn't you know, think that I was going to do that because of what he'd explained. They look for uh, actions that violate their terms of service. And in the Lauren Southern case, despite her uh, entirely false narrative that she was banned for being a journalist, Jack Conti showed the video of her doing the thing that violates their terms of service. And that is, what she was doing is not in any sense at all a journalistic thing to be doing. Uh, the First Amendment here in the U.S. is very, uh, very strong. Uh, free speech, freedom of the press is very cherished here. And uh, journalists, there's an exception to general laws uh, for journalists to be able to record um, various kinds of criminal activity. They can go with gangs and watch them do drugs. They tried to stop this in, I think it was in the 80s, maybe it was the 90s, I don't remember now. And the, you know, the court said, no, uh, the journalists aren't causing this behavior to happen. They're not funding the behavior. They're not encouraging the behavior. They're not conspiring. They're not participants. They're not principals, accessories, co-conspirators, aiders and abettors. They're journalists. They're simply recording things that people would otherwise be doing and then reporting on it. That you may not uh, stop. You can, of course, prevent them from participating in all these other things because the moment they uh, start participating in the illegal activities, they're not journalists anymore. They're just criminals. They're part of the gangs that they're, you know, doing the story on, the human smuggling ring, the drug smuggling ring, whatever it is, you're now a part of that. You're not a journalist anymore. You are a criminal who is recording your own criminal conduct as you commit it, which is very convenient for law enforcement. Thank you for providing us with such wonderful evidence. But so long as all they're doing is what a journalist does, there's some event happening, uh, I'm going to record it and document it and talk about it. Hands off, law enforcement. Stay the hell out of it. Lauren Southern did not do that. She was on one of these boats, and she said, and it's very plain in the video, she instructed the people who were doing the blockade that uh, was putting people's lives in danger, apparently, where to go in order to be able to do it, and she encouraged them to go do it. She's encouraging it. She's helping them gather information to be able to carry it off. And that is, in fact, an action, and it is not journalism. That is being a participant. It is a violation of the journalistic uh, st uh, ethics. And uh, it is manifest behavior that one could observe, and it was recorded. And so I was like, yeah, that she is encouraging them to do the thing that uh, Patreon believes, at least, is likely to injure, lead to people to being drowned or, or some such, and they want to know part of it perfectly well within their rights. But now, what used to be manifest observable behavior, observable behavior has apparently disappeared, and it's like manifest offense-taken behavior. And in the Matt Christensen thing, the, one of the central parts I want to talk about is that, um, this is why the mob was foreshadowing, is that he pointed out the Patreon that he went and typed in, quote, the N-word. The word is nigger. I really don't like it when people can't say the, the word. Uh, that denotes, that represents the thing about which they'd like to speak. It, it, a person who has to say the N-word doesn't seem to me on that subject to be the person I need to listen to because they're not even sufficiently serious to state what the word is. And if you can't state the problem by its name, it seems to me peculiar that you're going to have a great deal of insight into the problem when you can't make it past the, the word to get to the problem because the word's just, oh, God. But anyway, it, I know it's a convention. A lot of people just say it out of habit. Um, but consider this. We don't have the R word for rape. We don't have the M word for murder, the G word for genocide, though we do have V for vendetta, so I'll give you that. And I don't think that any other... This isn't calling people names. This is just stating a word in the dictionary uh, without, you know, euphemism, without trying to soften that which is evil. You shouldn't try to soften it when you talk about it. You should address it head-on, square-on, forthrightly, directly, and without apology. Uh, so that's what I have to say about that. Uh, this is not going into some black people's homes and screaming obscenities at them. This is just stating what you're talking about. Anyway, he says, I see 10 pages of, of results. And the lady's like, oh, we don't actually proactively look on the site for these things. We wait for people, a.k.a. the mob, to contact us, and then we, we review it. And he goes, well, you know, this has been done for these. They're still there. I checked last night. Uh, it's been 10 days or a week or whatever it is, blah, 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 blah. And they go through the standard they now use for these things, and it has, there's no objective standard, there's no attempted ex uh, 
at an objective standard. It doesn't matter whether or not what you're doing is related to Patreon. They just, if they if someone finds an example of you saying something in public that offends the Trust and Safety Council at Patreon, you know the little worker bee person they have there. If it, if it hurts their their fee fees, that it's game over. You you you're done. That's it. So I am going to be diversifying how I you might or as, as they say in the biz my revenue streams, <laughs> um, but I'm not going to do it precipitously. I. Waiting, you know, subscribe star was recommended to me. They stopped accepting the, their processors bailed on them like two days later. Uh, they are looking for them uh, reliable uh, servers. And, um, I'm sorry, processors now, payment processors. I mean, um, Jordan Peterson's working on some kind of alternate funding site. So if people are working on it. I'm going to keep my eye on that. And if, if and when a suitable alternative arises, then I'll certainly be there. Um, with respect to Patreon at the moment. Uh, I completely respect and understand why people out of principle are going to leave. Uh, I'm not in a financial position to do that immediately, and it would be rash even if I even if I were, because they have an opportunity to reform their conduct, and they're sending out these sur they sent me a survey. It's the first one they've ever sent me, and uh, yeah, I think it's for a reason. It, they want to know how much damage are we actually doing to our brand? What do people think? And uh, my answer to them, my statement to them was. I will. I cannot, in good conscience, recommend this service to anyone else to depend on as a source of revenue, because your wholly irresponsible anti-free speech, you know, fiat, is, would would put me would uh, put me in a bad position to be giving someone advice only for them to fall prey to your your you know, your whimsy and then suffer for it. And I'm not going to give someone advice to do something, uh, you know, bank their finances on you know someone who's so fickle. As, as Patreon is, and who have uh, lied uh, or have secretly changed what it is they do, I suppose I should say. So either they lied about the manifest observable behavior standard, or it got changed and I missed the memo, uh, or, or something. But whatever the problem is, it stinks. I will not be recommending it to content creators, um, because it would be irresponsible for me to do that, uh, to give them bad advice, bad financial advice. But I'm not going to leave straight away. I'm going to give it some time uh, and see what happens in the future. And I'm, I'm hoping that Patreon watches this. Um, please, if you are, don't do this. You know, it, it is bizarre in the extreme. Some people say things that you don't like. That, uh, if, that's, if that is the litmus test, that it's the subjective feelings of whoever's, whoever's on your tra trust and safety council, whether they like or dislike it, which is what was said, it is... We uh, evaluate it subjectively. The, the jig is up, and uh, people are leaving for a good reason. And I'm seriously considering it. And, and I, if you don't change, I will. I will leave eventually. Uh, whatever else comes true. So, that said, uh, link to Patreon down below, and PayPal too. Uh, I don't know what else to say. It's a very awkward position to be in, but here we are, and I've got to think a way out of it. But until then, you know. It is what it is. All right. Have a great day.